finally fixed. Hello, hunters. Welcome to Whisper and Miss Season Preview Livestream. I'm Z, and I'm Detective currently in Miss Wild. It's great to see you all. Just now, I received a briefing from my client Torchlight, and I'm going to share all my first hand information about this new season with you, hunters, including new season class of gameplay, new hero traits, new outfits, and a series of important future adjustments. Legend has it that there is a place, desolate and airy, where logic and chaos and disorder, and time flows backwards. This place is none other than Mistwild. Welcome, weary traveler. Why not take a moment to rest? Let me tell you a tale of Mistville. friends arrived here together. In this mist-shrouded town, you found a new home. You lived here carefree, getting along with your neighbors, admiring the beautiful scenery, and enjoying the joy of bountiful harvests. But then, Look up. Where do you go? Today is just like any other day. Water! I need more water! Sacrifice! Sacrifice! Never end. Let us rest in peace. Welcome, weary traveler. Why not take a moment to rest? In the new season, a mysterious mist has spread out across Mistful. Hunters will encounter Mistful residents in the Netherland, and defeating the residents will inevitably result in hunters getting infected. When the infection progress is complete, hunters can proceed to Mistful through the Mistful Trader transform into a detective and embark on a mysterious voyage of exploration. Mistel is shrouded in thick fog all year round and only by using lanterns can one see their surroundings clearly. When exploring Mistel, hunters need to consume sanity to disperse the mist in a certain area. As for what lies hidden beneath the mist, whether it's a sanatorium to restore your sanity, a bad omen style that brings a curse, it's up to hunters to explore and find out. During the exploration of Mistful, hunters will obtain various food and old stuff. They can bring about many unexpected effects, such as reducing sanity consumption, preventing salts hidden in the mist, and even doubling drop quantities. Of course, sometimes a small price must be paid. Keep in mind that food has limitations on the number of times it can be consumed and the quantity that can be carried while old stuff can consistently have a regular effect throughout the entire period of exploration. Clock Tower is the strangest place in all of Mistville. Whenever the bell tolls, folklorists will descend upon the town. Hunters need to complete challenges to solve these folklores. Once the tales have been solved, hunters will obtain the hidden treasures within the clock tower, as well as a chance to acquire activation medium, a mysterious item from Mistville. As for what the activation medium actually is, I will keep it a secret for now and introduce it to hunters later. With the folklore's resolved and your pockets weighed down with loot, head over to the bench and take a well-deserved rest. A new day will bring more mist, but everything is quietly changing. The longer a hunter stays in mistle, the more dangerous it becomes. But the rewards will also grow richer. Oh, and there's a mysterious legend in Mistville. A hunter who survives for 15 days can obtain a one-of-a-kind ultimate treasure. How long can hunters survive in eerie towns shrouded in mist? How many folklores they will witness? And how many mysterious treasures they will find? I can't wait to see how you'll get on. 
Exploring mist well is fraught with danger, but if you're good at noticing and recording any abnormal phenomena, the journey of exploration will undoubtedly be much smoother. A hunter can collect mist full intel and use it to activate nodes in the duction record. By doing so, they can uncover the truth hidden beneath those mysterious phenomena. As the investigation progresses, the hunter's sanity upper limit will increase, allowing for a wider selection of food and old stuff. You may even discover research on mistosis, a disease that only exists in mistful. Not sure what the exact symptom is, but it can stack multiple times. However, let me tell you, the more severe your mistosis infection, the more items you obtain from the treasure chest in a clock tower. In this way, perhaps the hunters will become even more formidable detective than me. Do you still remember the activation medium that I mentioned before? Now, it's finally time to reveal what it is. Activation medium is a brand new type of support skill. Typically, they are closely related to automatic triggers. Unlike other support skills, activation medium contains one to three affixes of random value. This might sound a bit abstract, so let me demonstrate it for everyone. First, equip the arrow unherger in the active skill slot. Then, install the hard-earned activation medium, Sentry, into the support skill slot of the arrow Einherger. When there are no sentries within a certain range around me, the activation medium will automatically help trigger the arrow Einherger. Moreover, the activation medium can also increase the damage of the arrow Einherger and the number of the arrow Einherger that can be placed simultaneously. How convenient is that? This means that starting from this season, controls will no longer be a problem for mobile hunters. Most activation mediums can simplify the operations for hunters, allowing them to experience unprecedented ease and joy. According to my extensive records, there is an astonishing 26 types of activation mediums in a wasteland. How far can hunters develop these activation mediums? I can't wait to see. Although, I don't have many activation mediums. I have prepared to several powerful activation mediums builds. Now, for example, if hunters obtained activation medium blink attack by linking it to any attack skill, you can intermittently blink to the nearest enemy and launch continuous attacks. Or if they obtained activation medium wind rhythm by linking it to any spell skill, they can automatically trigger the skill at short intervals. And this short interval can become even shorter based on their cast speed there is also the activation medium channel, which needs to be used in conjunction with that activation medium command. The former will issue commands when the supported skill reaches a certain number of channel stacks, while the latter will receive this command to enhance and release its supported skill. Oh my god, thank you too much. My brain can't handle it. Fantasy time is over. Let us wait for a new season to start and copy the builds of other hunters. After discussing the activation medium, let's talk about the changes to our skill slots. In previous seasons, the link logic for active skills and passive skills was inconsistent. Only corresponding support skills could be installed in the support slots for active skills, while other passive skills could also be installed in the support slots for passive skills. Since there is no limit to the number of passive skills that hunters can install, the optimal solution becomes to install as many passive skills as possible, which in turn greatly reduces the strategic choices available. Therefore, in the new season, we have modified the support logic of passive skills. Only support skills can be installed in the support slots of passive skills, and other passive skills can no longer be installed. As compensation, we have increased the number of passive skill slots from 3 to 4, in addition, we have designed new support skills for all paths of skills, hoping to broaden the ideas and bring more gameplay options. Oh, right, starting from this season, triggered skills no longer need to occupy paths of skill slots. They have left the stage of history and made a strong comeback in the form of activation mediums. Compared to the previous triggered skills, activation mediums have more diverse triggering conditions and the interaction between skills is more strategic. In the new season, due to the limitations of passive skill slots, the selection of passive skills will become particularly important for hunters. 
Choosing the most suitable passive skills, doubling down on their strengths and avoiding weaknesses, and striving for excellence with limited choices will be key in the upcoming season. On the other hand, the slot modifications have also liberated the support slots for passive skills to some extent. Although the total number of passive skills has decreased, hunters can now link more support skill to a single passive skill, making individual passive skills stronger. Rao has sent me a new intel. In this season, Katai Erika will light up the lighting shadow, making a stunning experience in a brand new form. <laughs> I gotta say, I love the kitties the most. Introducing the Kitty Pal Generator. After witnessing Yuvi's electrifying Ember technology, Erika's eyes lit up and she decided to try using shocks to bar Ember tech. With the help of Ember technology, Erika runs with sparks and lightning, gaining faster movement speed and higher damage. Erika also records the highest shot damage dealt within a certain period into her homemade feline figure. The feline figure has a chance to trigger when Erika hits an enemy shocking all enemies within the area and making them cry out in pain. Of course, Erika's strength goes far beyond that. Through her traits, hero relics, and memories, Erika will continue to enhance the power of Felon Figure and discover more ways to trigger it, such as activating Felon Figure while moving, allowing Felon Figure to consume Agility Blessing for buffs, and even accumulating electric light through movement to deal extra multiple instances of shock damage. As Yuka, whose hairstyle was changed by an electric current, once said as long as Erika keeps running, the torchlight will never go out. However, as a half-baked researcher, Erika focused on creating and modifying the Ember device for its flashy effects and powerful strength, but she didn't consider the necessary defensive measures. Well, it's good when the cat uses electrotherapy on enemies, but it's bad when the enemies hit back at the cat. The great challenge of survival is now up to you. Hunters, to help Erika out. This season, a new batch of legendary gears have been added to the hunter's journey. Let me introduce two of them. First up is the Legless Bird's Lament. Legend has it that when you wander through Mistwall, if you hear strange bird calls, be sure to keep an eye on your feet or they might suddenly run away from home. Kidding, obviously. But when you equip it, you seriously can't wear shoes anymore. Otherwise, your damage will be epically reduced. In return, it provides additional buffs such as reducing damage over time, increasing movement speed, and lowering nearby monsters lightning resistance at the cost of reduced erosion resistance. Mist Veil is shrouded in fog all year round, and to filter the mist, you might need this Mad Doctor Silver Plated Wand. It provides various magical buffs based on the type of skill you've recently used, such as Injury Buffer, Life and Mana Restoration, Empowering and Restoring Skill Effects, Size and Movement Speed. 
Sounds epic. By the way, now we have activation medium. It could form a fantastic synergy with them. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. Of course, the existing legendary gear has also undergone significant wave of adjustments. Listen closely as I explain them, one by one for everyone. Firstly, some legendary gear that often appears during the story stages around hunters has been optimized, such as the Siren Face Guard, which can now cause nearby enemies to be affected by the Biting Cold Curse. Additionally, Frozen Sight can trigger Ice Shot when the hunter applies Frostbite, and when combined with the Chest Armor Fan as on the trigger split arrow while moving, it can easily achieve automation. This easily obtainable early game legendary gear will undoubtedly become great helpers for hunters during their pioneering journey. The upper and lower limits of the core apexes for fine and precious legendary gear have been increased. This is great news for hunters who pursue the extreme. This kind of legendary gear often shines in various builds, and the Warden's Breastpin is one of them. Meanwhile, a large bunch of unpopular rare legendary gear has also been upgraded, with the hope of free employment after being laid off. For example, take Ice Trinker's Cage in the new season, the effect will no longer reduce movement speed, and this true sight armor, which can grant hunters an energy shield with a portion of cell mana. As for the others, please check the patch note later on. Well, another thing is, in the last season, due to some overly powerful affixes in Enamor, Hunters were actively challenging the queen and almost emptied her treasury. In the new season, we have adjusted the probability of each affix appearing in an emmer and reduced the drop probability of an emmer. Last season, we added the dream interpretation system, allowing hunters to craft legendary affixes onto their gear, turning many ingenious builds into a reality. In the new season, a large number of legendary affixes have been added to the dream interpretation system. Let me introduce two of them to the hunters. Dream Talking, Thou Mist Embrace, can apply the increased and decreased skill area values to area damage. And Dream Talking, Wind Breath Dispersion, when equipped in the left ring slot, can increase the channel lower limit. More Dream Talking can be found in the patch note later. In the future seasons, we will gradually add more legendary gear affixes to the dream interpretation system, making more dream gear a reality. After discussing the dream affects, let's talk about the resistance that hunters both loathe and hate. In previous seasons, resistance played an overly important role in the hunter's survival. If the resistance did not meet the standard, even if other survival stats were developed to an excellent level, the overall survival experience would still be poor. In the new season, we have changed the max resistance to 60% and made corresponding adjustments to the values of resistance affixes. Resistance will no longer decrease with the hunter's level, and the elemental and erosion damage dealt by monsters have also been reduced. After these changes, resistance remains one of the most important survival stats, but there will no longer be situations where hunters cannot continue if they don't meet the standard. And another good news, we've added a new magical ember, the reincarnation ember. It can change the type of resistance in the affix during targeted processing, including erosion resistance. <laughs> now you can reroll and adjust the resistance of your gear wherever it's lacking. Up next are some adjustments related to game mechanics. In the previous few seasons, we have been strengthening weaker mechanics, hoping that they can be used more widely, and have achieved some nice results. However, due to the very high cost effectiveness of some mechanics, many mechanisms with acceptable benefits have lost their employment opportunities in comparison, leading to an overly singular BD situation. In this season, we will make slight adjustments to these mechanics, such as the Court Allen Mind Focus, with the cold damage added adjusted from 2% of max mana to 1.5%. In the future, we will continue to optimize the mechanisms to strive to give more builds to more employment opportunity. After introducing the balance adjustments, I also want to talk to hunters about changes in the early game experience. In the previous season, we introduced solo soft found and hardcore mode. We have re-examined the early game experience for hunters, 
including the main story stage and Netherland journey from time mark 1 to 6. For a novice hunter just starting out, the current beginner's process does not effectively guide them in improving their skills, while for experienced veteran hunters, the beginner's process lacks challenge, making them seem too blind and boring. On one hand, we hope that the beginner's process can help novice hunters become more familiar with the game and discover the fun of the game. On the other hand, we hope that all hunters can experience the continuous self-challenge and the mind flow of the becoming stronger step by step in the process. Therefore, we have made the following adjustment to the beginner's process. Firstly, we have changed the main story from five chapters to three chapters, while also adjusting the difficulty of the story stages and adding a limit to the number of challenge attempts. The revised main story progression will be shorter, but more challenging. When hunters encounter bottlenecks in the main story, they can enter the treasure trove, filled with hidden treasures, to seek improvement. We have added to treasure troves in each chapter of the story, where hunters can gain a large amount of XP and specific legendary gear. In addition, to address the issue of abundant gear not bringing improvement to hunters, we have reduced the drop quantity of rare equipment, but adjusted the corresponding affixes and values to make their growth better. Finally, we have reworked the early Netherlum confusion cards. With these cards, hunters can now obtain the items they desire in a more targeted manner. We hope that these changes will improve the early game process, making it smoother, more challenging, and full of surprises. We also hope that the new beginner's process will become an important part of the hunter's beginning of the journey. When hunters first embark on their journey, they are likely to be overwhelmed by the variety of the gear available. Moreover, it's a challenging to create a complete and mature build with these highly randomized equipment pieces in early stages. To address this issue, we have introduced the drops in early and mid game. Set gear typically comes in sets of 6 pieces, and hunters will receive additional set bonuses when equipping 2, 4, or 6 pieces. During the story stage and early netherlum, hunters can steadily obtain set gear and continuously improve themselves with the help of the set. In this way, hunters will have a clearer sense of their early goals and the experience will be smoother. However, it must be noted that the strength of the set is only suitable for early to make game use. In the later stages, hunters will need to mix and match the gear that best suits them. After all, the quantity and builds of sets are limited, and we can't let them restrict the hunter's late game development. Some builds cannot be separated from their corresponding legendary gear, but the high threshold of legendary gear keeps hunters who want to experience it at bay. The inability to start the entire build due to the lack of a single legendary gear has undoubtedly frustrated hunters who want to experience different builds. In this season, a batch of popular high threshold legendary gear, such as Forlorn Crystal and Surging Inspiration, have welcomed their own youth edition prototype. The legendary prototype has slightly weaker effects, but the core system is similar and the acquisition threshold is significantly reduced. With these legendary prototypes, the issue of excessively high cost for some builds can be largely resolved, allowing hunters to better choose and experience their desired builds. Up next, we will be introducing a series of adjustments and optimization to the features packed with the useful information. The problem mentioned by the hunters in the last season have been properly addressed. First up is the build recommendation system. In the new season, we have connected the recommendation data from all of the different servers. Now, hunters can use build codes from any server and also share their own build codes with hunters on any server. In the last season, we introduced the customized filter feature, allowing hunters to define drop content according to their needs and enjoy a smoother loot experience. However, there are still some inconveniences in using custom filters, so we have restructured the filter condition editing interface to support convenient multi-selection of item types and affixes. In addition, we have added a filter leaderboard and a favorites folder. Hunters can make their filters public on the leaderboard, as well as download and collect their favorite filters from the leaderboard. Similar to the build recommendation system, 
Filter codes can be used globally, but the leaderboards are separate for each server. We have added explanations of some important game systems, such as the Trade House to the Help Manual, various items such as Skill Gear, Divinity Slate, Hero Relic and Memory can also be viewed in the Help Manual for their specific stats. We hope these changes will help hunters better understand the game. In the previous season, there were numerous rare monsters in the stages, but they were not very powerful and their loot was nothing special. Both the combat experience and the drop experience did not meet the expectations of the hunters. Therefore, in the new season, we have increased the life and drop quantity of rare monsters while reducing their numbers accordingly. Additionally, rare monsters will have their own random mavics, just like gear. As the stage difficulty increases, the number of random mavics on monsters will also increase accordingly. Monsters carrying ultra-rare affixes will have distinctive UI and combat performance and the value of the loot they drop will be extremely high. In the previous season, many hunters reported that the late game drop experience was monotonous, with many drop items no longer held in value, inevitably leading to the awkward situation of only looting flames in the late game. In the new season, we have added a batch of high-value items such as the Twin Reflection that can replicate any non-legendary gear. In addition, Flame Elementum has added 20 and 50 drop groups. New high-value items have also been added to the fluorescent memory shards, such as the Death of the Stars for exchanging the Darkest Corroded Ultimar legendary gear and the Boundless Realm of the Divine for exchanging Space Rift. At the same time, a large number of low-value fluorescent memory shards were swept out, such as Six Gods Boon, Euro's Legacy, and so on. We hope that these changes will enrich the drop experience for hunters and enhance the sense of surprise when looting in the later stages of the game. The Netherland is an extremely important part of the journey for hunters. However, before entering higher time marks, the process of unlocking progress in lower time marks can undoubtedly be very dull and tedious. In the new season, we have reduced the number of stages required to unlock new time marks and increased the initial time marks when unlocking certain areas. This change can speed up the early progress in the Nether Realm, helping hunters quickly enter their comfortable time marks. As the strength continues to grow, more and more hunters will venture in the higher time mark and deep space mode. However, Deep Space Mode only provides hunters with additional drop bonuses and does not bring any changes to the gameplay experience. This leads to a dull and monotonous Netherrealm experience in the endgame stage, lacking challenge and a sense of accomplishment. Therefore, we have made adjustments to the late-game Netherrealm experience. We have added a batch of compasses with rich function such as increasing drop quantity, increasing drop rarity, and adding extra monsters. Hunters can obtain these compasses through various gameplay or from the trader and use them wisely to boost their netherrealm journey. In addition, we have increased the difficulty of stages in deep space mode. Hunters will need to improve their damage output and survival to face the challenges from deep space. When hunters reach the late game, the conventional gameplay can no longer provide a challenge. A brand new endgame mode. Trial of Divinity will be introduced in this season. Hunters need to obtain different Divinity Emblem through the Six Gods gameplay, collect all four emblems to enter the Trial of Divinity, complete the challenges, and advance to deeper levels, proving their strength to the Six Gods. The Trial of Divinity gameplay will produce a unique currency, Divinity Stone. By using Divinity Stones, hunters can exchange precious rewards and the space-time wanderers blessings from gods including various ultimate and tier legendary gear. Oh, by the way, the content of the Avarice Bounty has also been merged into Blessings from Gods, so we have replaced the Desire Bee drop from the cube gameplay with the Divinity Stone. Then we will introduce the Trial of Divinity, Might, and other trials will be gradually unlocked in subsequent seasons. We believe that the Blessings from Gods will bring a unique and fresh experience for the hunters and we'll look forward to your outstanding performance in the Trial of Divinity. The Twin Lotus withers together, and the Leptis continent finally awakens from the endless long dream. However, in the new season, 
Hunters still have a chance to encounter the Dream Lotus in the Netherrealm, interact with them, construct sweet dreams and escape from nightmares, ultimately obtaining generous rewards in the Dream Bubble. In addition, we have designed corresponding trade cards and confusion cards for the Twin Nightmare gameplay. Hunters can use these cards to increase the probability of Twin Nightmare gameplay occurring, enhance the drops from Twin Nightmare gameplay, and so on. Up max optimizations to the user experience. We have optimized the drop performance, so lag or even crashes caused by too many drops will be significantly alleviated. As the drop performance has been optimized, as the pickup experience needs to keep up. Now, when hunters pick up items, all the same stackable items within the pickup area will be collected into the inventory at once. The compass you put in can now be saved. The last compass installed by the hunter will be automatically recorded, greatly simplifying their procreation. We have also optimized the damage numbers by adjusting their size and animation, distinguishing different types of damage with different colors, and highlighting the highest damage dealt by the hunter within a certain period of time to help hunters perceive their growth. The screen shake effect will now be reduced as the skill speed increases, hoping that this change will bring a more enjoyable and smooth combat experience for hunters. In the new season, we will unify Anchor Action and regular Battle Pack Spirit Rotate Boon into Project Battle Spirit Boon. This boon also includes some Battle Pack Spirits from previous season and hunters can choose any one of them to increase its drop rate. The Season Pack Spirit Boon has also been adjusted. In the Season Pack Spirit Boon, every time you obtain a rare or magic quality pack spirit, there is a 30% chance that it will be the corresponding Season Pack Spirit. We will be adding three new pack spirits, including one season exclusive pack spirit and two battle pack spirits. First, let me introduce this season's exclusive legendary drop pack spirit, Mist Velorfen. The girl who wanders in Mistful all year round is already familiar with everything here. When she feels happy, she will open a rift for you, letting you to the Mist Lake, where countless treasures are buried. Introducing the battle pack spirit backup power. It runs wildly inside the energy sphere, providing the hunter with basic shock damage. Additionally, it helps the hunter restore life and energy shield when settling shock and increases the hunter's movement speed. No doubt, it will become a valuable asset for Erica. Another pack spirit is the awe-inspiring Captain Kitty of the Furious Sea. It can make Warcry cast immediately, increase the charge points and cooldown recovery speed of Warcry and enhance the effects of Warcry. Yes, just like an enraged tsunami. The Season Pass has also added a wave of new benefits. By unlocking the Golden Season Pass, hunters can gain access to all heroes in the current season. Of course, the permanent usage rights of Erika's new hero trait. Light and Shadow, Advanced Auto Loot, Exclusive Portrait Frames, New Teleport Effects, and New Back Accessories will also be unlocked as progress is made. Of course, a new batch of fresh appearances has been added to the new season. Please take a look at the showcase. First up is the traditional theme boon, Conquering Demons, the magical resistance back accessory. Auspicious Beast will change its form based on the hunter's current resistance. When a certain resistance of the hunter reaches the upper limit, it will switch to the corresponding state. Cold form, fire form, lightning form, and erosion form, when all resistances are full, it will even enter the ultimate form. The shop has also added a super cost-effective universal appearance pack, Lavish Box, which you can purchase to bring home the Portal Gate of Lanterns, Drop Effect Colorful Flying Star, Invincible Number to Skin Slacker Baji, and new drop sound effects. Oh, the hunters might not know what drop sound effects is yet. Simply put, it's like an invisible best friend who accompanies you on your adventures, and when you obtain rare treasures, it will express its joy without any hesitation. The drop sound effects in this pack comes from a mysterious girl, and we believe her liveliness and optimism will add a lot of fun to your Netherrealm journey. Jackpot! Do you think it's enough to buy a house in the Netherrealm? This treasure looks so amazing! Something good will definitely happen today! 
when Erica accidentally enters the electric rainbow city filled with video games, what kind of adventures do you think will she encounter? There is also a batch of brand new skill effects, such as fruity transmission, thunder spike, spiral strike and more. They are sure to bring a whole new battle experience to hunters. Finally, I have some super exciting news. Well, turns out, Torchlight had been with everyone for almost a year. I secretly noticed that the crow has prepared a huge wave of goodies to thank the hunters for their companionship throughout the year. During the anniversary celebration, hunters will receive a beautiful reward each and every day they log into the game, including Jack Prim Crisp, Pack Spirit Crystal, Pack Spirit Boon discount coupons, exclusive back accessories, and the grand prize, a legendary Battle Pack Spirit selection pack where you can choose one of several legendary Battle Pack Spirits. The anniversary celebration event will be held alongside with a new season, so hunters must not miss the extravagant giveaway. That's all for this season preview. So, dear hunters, I'm expectantly waiting for your performance. It's a live stream. Why did the screen go black? Is it out of power? Holy sh! There's something we haven't mentioned yet. <sighs> Finally fixed. Hello hunters, welcome to Whispering Mystism Preview Livestream. I'm Z, and I'm Detective Colonel in Mistwile. It's great to see you all. Just now, I received a briefing form from my client, Torchlight. <laughs> Just kidding, I never actually received any message from Torchlight. I made up the whole press conference. Um, let me mention one last important thing. I'm happy to announce that the team up system will officially launch this season, allowing hunters to join forces with their friends in the battle. During the exploration of the Netherrealm, hunters can join or create two person teams to take on Netherrealm stages together. After forming a team, all members can choose to start the stage in either solo or team mode. The resonance, beacons, and compasses consumed in team up mode are the same as in solo mode, but the number of stage challenges is shared among all members. In team up mode, the pack spirit, trade card bonuses, and other bonuses are only affected by the initiator, not necessarily the team leader. After starting a stage in solo mode, the initiator can also convert it to a team stage in the stage selection screen. Team members can open the stage selection interface at the Netherrealm device and enter the already unlocked stages. However, please note that entering a team stage also requires you to unlock the corresponding time mark or difficulty in single player mode for that stage. Forming a team will bring a more the first age experience. When hunters cooperate to challenge the Netherrealm, the monster's strength will increase, while the hunter's XP and the overall drop from the stage will also be enhanced. We have designed various loop distribution methods for a team up, ensuring fairness while also providing a way to give lead to current teammates. The team leader can modify the distribution method at any time, and the changes will be notified to the team in real time without affecting the ownership of already dropped loot. Before joining a team, you can see the current distribution method. Hunters, please be noted that the current team map feature is still in the early stages and may experience issues such as lag and network fluctuation. Additionally, the number of players may not satisfy all hunters. However, we will continue to optimize the team up system experience in a subsequent season. We hope that all hunters can find their own suitable combat style and forge ahead on their journey in another room. As we have team up now, isn't it time to arrange gifts for our buddies? In the new season, the friend gifting feature will also be activated, allowing hunters to gift in-game items to their friends. Of course, to avoid our MT, we have limited the range of items that can be gifted and the gifted items will not be tradable or giftable again. We believe that with this item symbolizing friendship, new hunters can overcome the challenges of the early stage more smoothly and grow into independent heroes. Of course, the two crows didn't come back empty-handed. They have prepared a gift code for all hunters, 
enter this mysterious code in a game and see what you can get. That's really all the content for this season preview. New season, exclusive gameplay. New season development, the addition of the activation medium system, skill slot adjustment, early game process optimization, late game experience optimization, and the season pass create commercialization adjustment, as well as the much anticipated team up system. We hope these updates and optimization will bring the hunters richer, more exciting, and smoother experience. If you like my season preview, feel free to share it with your fellow hunters.